I'm Victoria Stilwell. Join me as I travel the US and discover stories of dogs and humans impacting each other's lives for the better. This is American Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lyrically it's dirty, you know so gully. All you see is bullies, microphones and scully. Baseball bat, the epitome. Principals and parents want to get rid of me. Pulling over tax on tracks, cause I'm that vicious. Cast stitches on rats just like black bitches. Bag riches and dough like sandwiches. Sacrilegious, like priests. Keeping an eye out for strays is Dan Carlisle, a local rap artist who goes by the name of Hush. Detroit Dog Rescue. Detroit Dog Rescue. Yeah. Detroit Dog Rescue. Detroit Dog Rescue, a charity that helps find stray dogs' homes and helps the poor care for their pets. And we know, that, you know, the, the amount of homeless dogs that are out there, we're going to do everything we can. When a dog comes up to me and he puts his head down and he, he just rolls over and just submits to you, it's like, please, like, you know, help, help. I'm in Detroit one of the cities that's been hit hardest by the economic downturn. Some of the forgotten victims of this tragedy are the animals. It's been estimated that there are over 50,000 stray dogs in the city. However, there's one organization that's helping to save their lives, Detroit Dog Rescue. I'm just gonna go around the room and ask everybody what they're doing today or, and, or I'm gonna tell you what you're doing today. Yesterday, uh, website and uh, Facebook is all updated with all the dogs. A um, couple new intakes that we have off the radar. Until Every single one? Every single one that's adoptable and ready. So, uh, Patrick, you will be rolling with us. Cool. Rodney, you're rolling with us. How many homes do they reckon have been vacated? 70,000. In the city? Mm -hmm. 70. Thousand homes in the city and a hundred and fifteen or so schools <gasps> abandoned. That's the water department. Now, what's funny is I'm gonna stop at this house <clears throat> nine times out of ten. I, I I will guarantee this house is down there. They were just there. We just passed them. I will be, bet dollars to donuts this house right here. There's still water running in the basement. Okay. I will guarantee it, unless they've shut that water off, which I highly doubt, okay? And just watch yourself. Oh my God. This is a year and a half. Whoa, okay, whoa. Okay, so the dogs on the next block that we're gonna go to, you know, this is the house they come to. They just jumped into this and get some free water. So, now, if you were over there, you could literally put a cup into that water and drink it. It's that, it's that fresh. But, and the water board hasn't switched it off. No, and not only that, but this is taxpayer dollars. So the dogs come down here and, and they, they get drink their from fresh this. water. Yep. And oh. this is this is homes all across Detroit. You know? So when a house is abandoned, then people from the neighborhood just come and strip everything out of it. Yeah. For the copper. For the And then they go sell it. The copper, the metal, whatever they can scrap and make some money, they do. They just oh, break. Oh, they rip that bathroom. They, there, is, there is nothing left in here. There no, is nothing. Uh -uh. You walk into a house like this and you're like, okay, this, is, this isn't the way it's supposed to be. There's no reason for the person who lives in that house right there to look across the street and see this. And this is one of 70,000 houses. Oh, yeah, or more. You know, not to mention hospitals, full hospitals abandoned. High schools, you know, that held 900 kids. This was once a beautiful house. This was a, I mean, it's absolutely a lovely house. beautiful house. I can't imagine if this is one house that has a water main busted, that the water's just flowing like this. 
how much, how many more are out there that are exactly the same. And that's taxpayers' money. And that's taxpayer dollars at work. Going down yeah. the drain. What's the deal with these dogs? Well, this is uh, this is my friend Keisha's dogs. Her and her husband, they take care of them. They've been we've been coming here for a, at least a year now. And you know, Keisha and her husband, they're they're what what we like to call responsible dog owners. You know, they, they have, you know, housing for their dogs. Their dogs don't stay outside. Their dogs are inside dogs. You know, they yeah. curl up with the kids. You know, last year sometime, Keisha and her husband, they, they had a little bit of, you know, financial hard times and we came through for them. You know, we gave them, you know, some food, treats, everything that they needed, you know, to just to get by for, for a little bit of time. And since then, you know, they, they take the ball and they run with it, you know? Mm -hmm. The problem is, is you know, we, like we've got all these community dogs you know, such as Gizmo and, you know, the, the lab, you know, shepherds, you know, they just run free in the neighborhood. They, they have to have a fenced-in yard like this or else Gizmo and his his cronies are going to come in there oh. and, you know, and they're going to have litters and they're going to be unwanted litters. How many dogs do you think are in this area? Probably about 20 since we've been coming back and forth here for the past year and a half. Um, and documenting, you know, what we've saw, and we've gave them all names and, and that sort of thing. Okay. Probably 20 within the past uh, year and a half. And you, you see it all the time. What about your kids, though, playing in the neighborhood? My kids don't play in the neighborhood because of the stray dogs. They do try to attack my children. It's hard for them to even ride their bikes to a certain extent, so we try to stay right here and a little farther, or I put my dogs on this side of the fence so they won't come any farther, because once they bark, then they know not to come past my house. You know what, weirdly enough, I have to say, this is actually quite a nice environment for, for dogs. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, if it's you think humble, about it's quiet, the, it's just Right, relaxing. if you think about it in a shelter, these dogs that are just cooped up in a shelter with a tiny little kennel run, what's better? They'll be crazy. A life out like here where you are, you're, you're gonna suffer in a way with medical issues and, right. or a life in a shelter. In a way, as you were saying, Detroit is almost, getting reclaimed by nature again. Right. Strangely enough. Right. What's the significance of this house? This house uh, last year was the first house that we actually came to uh, in this neighborhood. Um, when we got here, um, we found six puppies upstairs. Um, three of them were tucked underneath a dresser, um, way off in a corner. And the only reason we knew that was because we heard the the other three yelping. Um, when we got to them, three of them were dead. The other three, um, we took them out of here. And then the next day, um, we came here and we jumped on the porch right where Rodney is, and we looked through the window because there are there are no there is no glass. And there was three dogs on the on the inside laying on a couch, <laughs> which was kind of, you know it's like they've they've taken over the abandonment as like their their own. These are just basically just large dog houses now. Well, it turned out to be Gizmo, um, his son Daylight, and then another one, um, which we used to call the Sentry, because she'd always be, she, she was the one that was always tucked around a corner, watching out on everybody, you know, and she'd make the noise, she'd bark and alert the rest of the crew, and then they'd all leave out the back door. When you talk about reclaiming Detroit, you know, the animals, you know, are definitely reclaiming the city by taking these houses over. Like if humans don't want them, then... The animals are gonna have them, aren't they? They're ours for the keeping. Okay, so here's a, here's a call that I just got. Uh... Hi, this is the lady off Maryland and Nada Drive where the dogs are. Um, I was wondering, can you come and get the dog? Cause she's pregnant again. And she looked like she's gonna have puppies and you know, she's really terrorizing the male people and the little kids that's going to school. Now this, this dog had already had a litter. We got the litter from the mother, but we could never catch the mother, okay? She was gone and, and whatever. But this lady and her, her I, I think it's her mother or her, a member of her family, they keep feeding this dog, okay? So they feed the dog and the dog comes out and reports, the dog is great with them but nobody else. And obviously the, the dog was terrorizing in the neighborhood because she was pregnant. But no, now and, and the now, now, now the dog's pregnant. pregnant again because she's out roaming the streets. So she's gonna have another litter. So that's two 
you know, and within six months. And what happens is the, the neighbors will find out where those puppies are. They'll take the puppies and then they'll sell them. Oh, there he is. There's one right there. See him? By the boat? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the nasty one. Now, there's there's no point in rescuing that dog. No. That dog ain't not going to get is the com- This is one of the community dogs. This whole block, you know, feeds them and takes care of them. And, you know, and here, Giz. Hi, Giz. Hi, Giz. Hi, baby. This is Gizmo. Hey, Gizmo. Has Gizmo been neutered and released or? No. 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 Not book. yet. Giz is old. Giz was left by his owner. Would you take a dog like that in or not? This is this is I would one take of these him dogs. in, but put him in a sanctuary. Yeah. I can't. It, uh, Gizmo's an outdoor dog. He refuses to come inside. He refuses to, you know, hang out. For me, I spend most of my time going to people's homes, dealing with their problem dog behaviors. Very rarely am I involved in just coming out and just hanging out with stray dogs on the street. But here they are. Here it is, in the center of Detroit. Oh, that's my, She's oh. the one that you don't want to mess with. Oh yeah, she's pregnant, that's it. For sure. And she sure. she is pregnant, look at that. So there's gonna be another, another nine litter. puppies, another litter Ooh. that like you can't take this dog in, uh-uh. and you know she won't be rehabilitated to be a domestic, you know, for a, to be a do- on a domestic level. Now you see okay. where she went? Kennel, yeah. There, huh? Underneath that porch, that's where she's gonna have these puppies. Now the guy that lives here, he doesn't like us coming around, but I told him, I'm sorry, homie, but you ain't got a choice. You know, you don't own the city. Look where she's at right now, underneath his porch where she's probably gonna give birth to them puppies any day, you know? And then what do you think is gonna happen to those puppies? They'll get hustled out, you know? They'll get sold out, you know, 50 bucks a piece, $20, whatever. Is she part of the group here? She's a part of the group now. She became a part of the group about, I'd say, seven months ago. Um, These dogs, the Gizmo, personally, has been around here for four years four to seven years. Seven months ago, she showed up um, with her baby, the puppy, the the black one that's over there. Um, They packed up with Gizmo because the community was feeding them food. There is already a generation of dogs in Detroit that are feral, who don't want to be around humans. There's more value in leaving these dogs on the streets versus trying to rescue and adopt these animals. Sanctuaries won't take them. They don't want to be around humans. So as long as they have food, shelter, and medical attention, as well as being spayed, neutered, and re-released, then all things considered, life on the streets is better than a crate, a small kennel run, or being put down. You know what? What I've seen today is that most people around here own pits or pit mixes of some type. It's a fashion. You know, it's like a new pair of shoes. These kids will get these dogs from people, you know, $50, $60, and whatnot. Um, And then three months later, they just kicked that dog out because they they finally realized like, oh shit, like I had, this is like having a child. You know, I'm not ready for a kid, you know? It's a dog. It is a dog. I don't know if it's a dog. It's been eaten from the from the Oh yeah. There's a collar still on it. So the teeth are uh, really good for me a long uh, young dog. His teeth he's probably only about two years old. Yeah. He's on a chain, this dog died. Look. Yeah. This is where the chain is. Yep. This dog died here. He's still on his chain. The chain is going to his collar around his neck and this is the chain that chained him. He died on the end of his freaking chain not cool, you know? No dog should have to be dumped here and left like this, you know? He had to have came through here at some point and he just couldn't drag this anymore. That is I mean, heavy. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is something that you'd use on a boat, you know? 
you could, I mean, you could use it to pull a car, you know? It's not fair. Not fair. This isn't, this isn't right. This isn't no, this, this is what I'm dealing with. You know, I'm trying to end this. Well, on a daily basis, Detroit Dog Rescue gets phone calls from citizens saying, you know, we have a dog or there's a dog that's been roaming the streets. We picked it up. Um, we can't take care of it, but we also don't want it to be euthanized. Can you come get it? Apparently the dog was dropped off from a friend who said that they couldn't take care of it because they had another dog that they were afraid they, the two dogs wouldn't get together. Hello, how are you? Hi. I'm with Detroit Dog Rescue. Okay, I'll be right back home. Thank you very much. Hi. Hey, Hi. Hey, Hi. Hey, hey, baby. That ain't no puppy. Hi. Hi. What happened to him? Hi, sweetheart. I don't know, my friend dropped He's him off the house. He's got a bunch house. of burn marks on oh, him and his he ears. Does. Hi. 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 Hi, there's a Maine burn marks. That's mange. That is mange. That's mange. Yeah. It's a skin infection. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's got fly bites on his ears. Yeah, you can see. it's all right. It's okay. Oh, you're a big baby. Yeah. You guys got a leash, a collar, or anything like that? No. No, no, no tags, no nothing, huh? Duke's a submissive peer, so. Yeah, watch him, because he's, he's a peer, so. It could be. I don't it's, think it's Ray Mark, no. I think it's Dermodex. Yeah, Dermodex mange. All right, thanks for calling. Dog like that, beautiful dog. Beautiful, beautiful color. Obviously, he's very submissive, you know, and he, he, he likes people. Mm -hmm. So when we get a dog like that, and you see how he acted, acted with us. Yeah tail wagging, ears back. Oh, yeah. It's very submissive, pees right there in the spot. You know, loves to, you know, be rubbed and touched. Our temperament test is halfway done. Yeah, exactly. A little bit. Thanks. Oh. Good boy. This is what a true pit bull is like. This is it, you're looking at it. This is the demonized breed. Look at this. Perfect. Oh, that there is. Look at you with a new collar. Oh, right, there he is. Look at that, baby. Look at him, fresh man. Yay. <laughs>throughout the year, we you know have some amazing fundraisers, some small, some big. This year, this is our biggest fundraiser uh, you know, of the year, and it's not necessarily a fundraiser of sorts. We, the event is called um, 100 Roast for Woofs. We are building 100 dog houses in eight hours today. <laughs> um, we set out, I called Home Depot, we set out just to see if it was a possibility, if they'd want to work with us. We got embraced 100% by them. They were so excited. The same people that are getting the dog houses, which will be qualified residents, they're also going to be getting, you know, hay, probably a nice little gift bag, a 40 pound bag of food, you know, some treats and toys for their dog. A big problem that we face a lot, and I don't know if you guys heard Dante's talk, but we do find dogs that have been frozen to death or that have um, literally been baked in the sun to death. And unfortunately, dog houses and shelter in general is just extremely expensive. This is something that was fairly uh, cheap to do, actually. Why? Because look at these amazing volunteers that we, you know, we don't have to hire anybody to actually, you know, do this kind of work. You know, this is something that people love to come out, they love to help, they love to, you know, work with us. A lot of people out there, they want to help, but they have no way of knowing how to do that. Well then DDR puts these programs together and we're that bridge that connects us with the community, you know, with, with them, with the community, through us. The volunteers have been like such go-getters. I thought we were going to have a bunch of people that, you know, I mean, you didn't really know. They are such go-getters and they got literally almost all 100 assembled already. So all we're going to do is put roofs on, put shingles on, cut the doors out and decorate. And as you can see, um, everybody's been making them pretty colorful. We've got a kid that's tagging graffiti on a bunch of them, making them look awesome. So, so why are you painting? Why are you painting out here today? It's because uh, I feel bad for all the dogs that were in Detroit and so both of you created this today? I didn't like the pink and the paw print and the letters. I love that. I think this is fabulous. Tell me why you're doing this. Oh, it's just for the dogs, you know? They need homes. 
Um, the next step for these dog houses, we're loading them all up tonight. Tomorrow, bright and early, we're delivering 50 of them. Um, we've got 25 on the east side, 25 on the west side of Detroit to deliver. They're all going to homes um, for the dogs that live outside 24-7. Well, cool, Mr. Jones. All right, man. You know what's up. Yes, I appreciate it, too, man. You know, no doubt. I ain't had no love like this in quite a while. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little love, right? Yeah, because, like, ooh, man, I love them jokers with that. I wouldn't take nothing from them. I treat them just like kids. Yeah, man. And whatever it takes, man. You know, I went through a lot now with my neighbors when I first came here. But all the kids took a liking. I had to make them go home sometimes, you know, because if when the kids playing with them, you can make a dog bite you. But oh, you, yeah. They right. play hard. Yeah, you can pull his crazy. tail. Yeah, you pull his tail, pose, smack him a couple yeah, times. Yeah, see, you got to be a supervisor when, when they are, kids are playing with them. Right. And then when you get tired of them, you hate to run them home. Yeah. He's <laughs> just like you're one of your kids. That's right. Once you get used to it. Never had a lease. Cause I tried that on them. I'm, I can't fish her in here. Picture with Mr. Jones? This, yeah, man. This is one day I never will forget. What I'm most proud of working with DDR, the fact that whatever I do from point A to point B for the rest of my life, whatever happens after this point, I feel that I'm making a difference, not only for dogs, which I have a love for, but I'm making a difference for people. And I'm making a difference for my son to show him that it's not the money in your pocket. It's not things you may think are valuable to you that makes you who you are. It's what you do it's what you give because you're born into this world naked and crying and screaming in a little ball and you're gonna die going out in sort of the same fashion and the only way your legacy is gonna live in this world is if you do and give and doing and giving for not only animals but for people is what I get out of Detroit Dog Rescue. Detroit is damaged but it's a city that's been founded on hard work passion and dedication. The citizens of Detroit continue to fight for change and Detroit Dog Rescue is a perfect example. I'm Victoria Stilwell for American Dog.